Hello friends, my name is Dalit Soni and you are watching In Depth by Drishti IAS. In this video, we will be talking about the bleeding eye disease or the recent uh, Marburg virus outbreak in Rwanda. Okay, so recently this outbreak has killed nearly 15 people and because of which it has become a global concern. So, we will be talking about that. So, let us start our discussion. Today, we will be looking at these aspects over here. First, we will be going through the news and after that, we will be talking about the nature of the virus. Then, we will be talking about the transmission symptoms and what are the global concern related to it and what you know uh, initiative has been taken that is current effort by various institutions and the local government okay in the end there will be a practice question for you that you have to attempt and answer to me in the comment box now let's start our discussion before that i would like to tell you that all the classes of the tis mukherjee nagar now has been shifted to sector 50 noida okay uh, and the first offline batch for the Hindi medium will be starting from 9th December 3 pm and for English medium that is starting from 12th December 6 pm. For any further query you can call on this number and address is given over here. Nearest metro station will be your sector 15, Noida sector 15 metro station. Okay. Other than that, uh, in Prayagra center we are starting our offline batch for GS foundation that is from 2nd of January. One more information over here is that uh, somehow 2025, we have started this new initiative for your integrated prelims as well as mains preparation. So, here you will be getting 10 daily practice questions for prelims. Then you will also be getting uh, two practice questions for your mains and these questions are designed in a way after the, uh, you can say PYQ analysis. So, th this will be very relevant for your preparation. Okay. So, this is open for all. You can access this particular initiative form at our website. Okay. So, now let's move further and see the news. Marburg virus outbreak in Rwanda, why bleeding eye disease is a global concern. An outbreak of Marburg virus disease has killed at least 15 people and infected at least 66 in Rwanda as of November 29, the country's Ministry of Health has announced. Okay. Now, here they are talking about Rwanda. So, you have to give special attention to Rwanda uh, since it was in news that can be asked in examinations. Other than that, we will be talking about the Marburg virus disease. Okay. Talking about the location of Rwanda that is there in the African continent here you can say this is there in African continent. There are various lakes which are found in the vicinity over here like Lake Bulera, Lake Kivu, here uh, Lake Revaru. All these lake, lakes are important. Okay, This is Rwanda and the vicinity you will be seeing Uganda is there, Democratic Republic of Congo, here Burundi and Tanzania. Okay, So, this is the location. Now, coming to the uh, special focus of the video that is basically the Marburg uh, virus. Okay. Considering the nature of virus here, Marburg virus disease, disease often referred as the bleeding eye disease is one of the deadliest pathogen with case fatality rates ranging between 24% to 88%. That is the fatality rate. In different, uh, uh, you can say, uh, different uh, uh, strains of virus has different fatality and uh, you can say different outbreaks in different countries has the different fatality, okay. But that is ranging between 24% to 88%, okay. Now, what is MVD that is your Marburg virus disease? A highly virulent disease caused by the Marburg virus belonging to the Filoviridae family. Okay, Filoviridae family uh, same as the Ebola virus family. Okay, notable for causing severe hemorrhagic fever. So, we will be talking about that in when we were be, uh, we are discussing the uh, you can say symptoms. Historical context if we talk about the first outbreak was there in Marburg that is in Germany in 1967. After that, there has been various outbreaks. Major outbreaks are in Africa, including Angola, 2005, Tanzania, Ghana, and Rwanda in the recent past. Okay. Now moving further, here you can see what is the transmission factor, or what are the factors which are leading to the transmission of this particular virus. Okay. So primary source here you can see initial cases linked to the prolonged exposure to the colonies of uh, Rosetus bats. These uh, you can say bats are there. These are basically considered as the natural host of this virus, especially Egyptian fruit bats. Okay. Coming to the next one, human to human spread. If we talk about, there are two ways. One is the direct uh, interaction, and second is your indirect. Okay. When we are talking about the direct spread, contact with the infected blood, bodily fluid, or tissues. Okay. So if there is infected blood or body, bodily fluid like saliva, etc., is there. Okay. Or the tissues. In that case, you will be having a direct transmission indirect transmission if you talk about so let's say if there is a person who is infected and he has touched a glass and then you are touching the same glass that is your indirect transmission so through contaminated surfaces or materials like bedding or clothing okay so that is basically the ways of transmissions now moving further symptoms if we talk about so it has a incubation period of 2 to 21 days 
okay it has an incubation period of 2 to 21 days that means that from the time when you were exposed to the virus then the first symptom has been shown that is the time first is your exposure from the exposure till your symptom is uh, basically visible that is the time is uh, incubation period okay so basically that typically you will be seeing that that time is 2 to 21 days okay initial signs if we talk about so high fever severe headache muscle ache abdominal pains and the watery diarrhea these are the you know initial uh, symptoms which are there by looking at the symptoms you will not be realizing that you are going through the bleeding eye disease or uh, you are having uh, normal fevers like malaria or dengue etc okay so the diagnosis at the initial level is kind of difficult but these are the initial signs and after that severe mani manifestation if you want to talk about so here you will be seeing hemorrhagic symptoms okay that is including the bleeding from the eyes gums digestive tracts and other parts of your body fatalities often occur 8 to 9 days post symptoms onset due to the severe blood loss and shock after the you have exposed to the virus they, it will take some time that is incubation period after that you will be seeing the symptoms after you are you know showing the symptoms with, uh, you, within 9 to 10 days you will be seeing that there are high chances if that is more severe there are chances of fatalities or death okay so that is there because of the blood loss and shock now coming to the next part that is basically global concerns why concern is there because we have seen that the fatality rate is 24 percent to somewhere around more than 80 percent okay so that means that that is a very high rate okay so fatality rates makes uh, it a global health priority because of the high fatality rates lack of preparedness because right now till now we do not have any kind of uh, particular treatment or the vaccines for that no specific drug or vaccines are available for that right now there are some experimental treatments which are going on which are in the development okay who has included this particular disease in the list among the pathogen posing the greatest global health risk okay so you can remember this part now moving further what are the current efforts so supportive care uh, we know that there is a you know diarrhea which will be there that means that the water loss will be there from the body so for the rehydration you can go for the rehydration therapies either oral or iv fruits and Symptom, uh, symptomatic treatment improves survival chances symptomatic treatment that means that you are going for the treatment of the fever because obviously uh, you know that the initial signs are fever headache etc so you will be starting from the treatment of fever etc so that can improve the survival charges uh, ch uh, chances okay now moving further experimental uh, vaccines if we talk about so recently uh, rwanda has been administered with the 700 doses of experimental vaccine by the Sabine Vaccine Institute of Healthcare Workers uh, to the healthcare workers. So basically, this institution has given some of the vaccine doses to the healthcare workers so that they are not exposed to it. But these are experimental vaccines. Okay, uh, results are not yet known properly. Okay, so these are just experimental uh, vaccines. We do not know the efficacy of these vaccines. Okay. So this is about the your, you can say Marburg virus uh, disease and the bleeding eye disease. Why are we calling it bleeding eye? Because uh, we have seen that there will be blood loss from the various parts of the body. Okay. So if the eye uh, ble uh, bleeding is happening through the eyes, that is why it is called as bleeding eye disease. Okay. So this is about all your uh, you can say Marburg virus and the bleeding eye disease. Now in the end we have one question for you. That is your practice question. Here you can see what is the natural reservoir, reservoir host of the Marburg virus? mosquitoes Egyptian fruit bats pigs or monkeys so you can attempt this question and answer to me in the comment box with that i would like to take your leave if you have not subscribed the channel please subscribe it have a nice day thank you for more informative content like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications.